How's it going, everybody? Mr. Holton here. Today, we are going to be, well, we're going to be recapping essentially everything we know about the next Mass Effect, of course, uh, because next week is in seven days. So, well, wait, it's on Tuesday, so it's not going to be on Monday. And to answer that question I just got in the comment section or in the chat, uh, I'm a little, you know, unsure. I think we're going to put uh, the Mass Effect stream on the day after because I'm probably going to be cranking out videos on Tuesday next week. So in case you're wondering what we're going to do with the next, you know, Mass Effect Monday, we're going to probably like shift it ahead. Or maybe we'll just hold the Mass Effect Monday as usual just to, I don't know, I guess hype it up <laughs> a little bit. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. But in any case, I want to go through essentially, as I said, all we know. So this might be a little longer stream than it usually is. I want to go into some nitty gritty details here and I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of uh, Bioware blog stuff because we know that uh, those uh, blog posts are not necessarily super exciting. So yeah, we're going to mostly be jumping into images and stuff by Michael Gamble and stuff like that. Before uh, uh, before we start doing that, I gotta say hi to everybody. Demian Little MS, uh, too bad I have to go now. Wish you have have a nice stream. Thank you, Demian. Uh, Dark Knight, how you doing, Josh? Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna dive into it for the at least for the foreseeable future after uh, N7 Day. In case we actually get something, that's the good question. Uh, <laughs> Live you and Orc. Uh, hi, Mister Thirsty BG Mod. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? Uh, he's late. Ah, uh, just a just a just a tad, just a tad. I was just testing out to make sure that the OBS was working as it uh, should. New hair haircut? No, I actually need to go to the. Um, I was supposed to say dentist. No, I need to go to the the hair salon. Uh, what have I missed? Not much, actually. Not much. I've, I guess I've just showered. That's probably it. <laughs> How you guys doing, by the way? Are you excited? I I'm going to, you know, go out on the limb here and say that uh, on average, I think 70% of you guys are excited for N7 Day. I saw that on the poll. I just, I was just very curious about how you guys would respond to a poll. So, and I know I've done a lot of polls, but it's just, I, I can't help it. I just find it interesting to see what you guys think about stuff. Um, <laughs> With the fresh cuts. No fresh cut here, man. I just showered. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, good day, reggae. Uh, old Lego. How you doing? Colton Builder. How you doing? I'm excited. Of course you are, Elias. You're always excited. <laughs> uh, yo, I'm here. It's good. Ghostly bursting with excitement. Oh, hell yeah. That's This is one of those days, you know? One of those moments one of those periods where i'm actually super excited and you can tell because i'm actually fired up which is you know it's not i'm not that too much <laughs> nowadays i'm getting old and i i'm feeling in my i'm feeling in my age that it's hard to get excited for stuff but you know mass effect is my favorite franchise ever of all time so of course i'm a little <laughs> just a little okay and I'm going to try to push for some more positive, po like positivity, I guess, for the channel. I think that's a good idea because that's what I think like a lot of you came to the channel for. Just the excitement of stuff, I guess. And we need more of that stuff. Um, Kala is, of course, very excited. Of course you are. <laughs> Anna, how you doing? Welcome. Will we get some good next week? Yeah, me too. It's probably going to be super tiny. I need to mention that as well. It's probably going to be super tiny, just as it's been. The last few times but it's still gonna be something you know something to uh, get our taste buds going right 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 <laughs> happy on seven day not yet lubu but yeah happy on seven day <laughs> when it happens max steel uh personal i'm so excited obviously i'm hoping for a trailer me too me too i don't think that we're gonna get a trailer i just want to make sure that people know that that's i don't have any like a line of communication with anyone at bioware i've never had that actually <laughs> But, uh, as far as I know, there's been no teaser at works like that. Uh, so, oh, yeah, you know. Uh, expect another thing like last year that we'll get a trailer, though. Yeah, it's probably going to be something like what we what we got last time. Like a small little, you know, yeah, nibble. In any case, with this, I want to start off with the actual announcement of the next Mass Effect game. 
because that's where it right you know that's where it all started we of course got this uh this announcement by michael gamble himself uh, in 2020 december 11. so that puts it at a well it's coming up in three years and the interesting part here is this is something that kala has even like uh, covered in her own video is that michael and probably some other people uh, had already started working on the next mass effect a while before this i think uh, like there was an idea that he started thinking about this or you know working on this for like at, at least like a year or more uh, because it's like on his linkedin profile now i don't want to log into linkedin because i i, I don't know it's just a you know <laughs> just analyze his entire profile on linkedin i'm not going to do that here but you know it's a public profile essentially so uh, it, there it says that he's been, I think it says that he's been working on this game ever since, well, 2019, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. I think it's somewhere around there. Uh... <laughs> what up, Killmonger? Um, we can dream for a trailer. Very true. Very true. Now, the thing is, I will not check the... Uh, the, the chat all the time because that's just gonna throw me off <laughs> but i'll read every now and then i never forget your tears of joy after seeing the teaser for me5 that was a beautiful time i remember that oh, tears in my eyes oh okay so what i really want to do right is this was something that i was not planning to do at first but i feel like i really should and that is i want to i want to check out the trailer here live with you guys because i've actually i haven't seen this uh in a long time like in its entirety so we're gonna pop this up and it's probably gonna be very enlarged for you guys but hey you know let's go let's pause this let's check it out just for time old time's sake right Look at that beautiful shot. And I'm pretty sure it is going from the Andromeda Galaxy to the Milky Way because, of course, as we'll see later, obviously it is. Oh, yeah, baby. Of course, a little nod towards Andromeda. It's a relay. <laughs> it's not the Citadel. Is anyone receiving this? It's a relay. I am so sure that we're gonna deal with the aftermath of the Reaper War, especially with that, you know, thing she said right there at the end. We've lost contact. Still the mystery planet. Of course, we have a girl here walking a dead Reapers. It's so cool. I just love that idea. Oh, baby. Can I just say <clears throat> that I just absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely love the rendition of the uh, of the main theme here, right? It's ha it has this like almost like it's it's an evolved version of the theme uh, and like it just fits perfectly because you're thinking oh this has got to be a sequel you know it's it's got to be something that deals with whatever happened after uh, the trilogy and I'm just all in for it I just love the soundtrack in case you're wondering or if you in case you didn't know I'm a huge fan of synth wave music and synth stuff you know 80s inspired stuff so this was just oh this trailer really told me uh right from the get-go even from that reaction trailer i did back in the day just how much i can see that michael and the team seems to really understand mass effect to its core 
because, you know, as some of you may know, uh, there are actually old members from, you know, that worked on the trilogy uh, that are coming back in case you didn't think there was. There are. So, <laughs> and we're going to go over that. In any case, it just, I don't know, it's just magical to me. I just, I just lose my train of thought immediately whenever I see this trailer and just listen to the music and the commentary. It's just so good. Uh, I'm going to jump back for a moment to the little uh, <laughs> commentary. Um, love her smile at the end. Absolutely. she Liara is so lovely. I know there are people that are not fans of Liara, but... I mean, yeah, let's let's not kid ourselves. She is a very beautiful, very beautiful character. So, <laughs> but I do agree that we still see some, you know, we do see what looks like wrinkles here. So it would appear that she's, uh, she's a bit older, uh, naturally, because it's a sequel, we can assume. But uh, how much older, you know, we've speculated about maybe it's a couple of thousand years into the future or whatever. But, you know, she definitely looks like she has crow's feet. And I know there are people that, that have said that this might just be because of the technology, right? Unreal Engine 5, anyone? So uh, who knows? But I, I doubt this was made. I think this was made in something else. This was not made in Unreal, I'm pretty sure. Liara haters big mad. <laughs> The, uh, have you read the Art of the Emmy trilogy? I think I have, when I think about it. Not sure. Cried. <laughs> Absolutely. Good evening, Mara Sims. How you doing? Uh, the destroyed relay, the ship part, looks like the Normandy Hall. You think? A little bit. EBM and Future Pop. Yeah. Love it. Amazing music. Uh, in any case, that was the trailer. This was the announcement. And here, I, I even missed this part. He says here, uh, I've thought about this almost every day for the past 1,360 days. That's, what is that? Four years? That is probably ever since Andromeda came out, right? So, uh, he's probably, he's been thinking about this for a long time. But then, you know, when he started working on this next game, I think it was 2019. Uh, officially it says uh, then we gotta jump in here we got something more but before we jump into that uh we gotta we gotta we gotta jump into um uh, the different things that uh michael kept writing after this uh of course he as i mentioned here he announced a couple of uh big names at the studio we have dusty everman right uh, who worked on Mass Effect, especially the Normandy, right? He's the person who essentially made the Normandy what it is. So if you love the Normandy, and if you think the Normandy is iconic, which it is, you have Dusty to thank for a lot of that. Of course, there's an entire team here, so, you know, we have all of them to thank, but Dusty in particular, it seems. Uh, Parrish was, was uh, Parrish Lay, that is. Parrish was the cinematic director for the Mass Effect trilogy. Many of the amazing moments he had were crafted from him and the team. Uh, Parrish decided to read John Bauer to bring this vision of the new Mass Effect to life. Again, another oldie but goldie. Great. You know, it's good to see the veterans come back, and I think that's something that's desperately, ne desperately needed. And I, I'm pretty sure Michael thought about that before making all these posts. Pretty positive about that. <laughs> Because that's one thing that was like needed to get people back into the seat was, hey, can we get some of the oldies back again? Because we need people that really at the top understand what Mass Effect is all about, right? Uh, Nuggy, how's it going? Uh, anything T's for N78? Not yet, but we're going through a bunch of stuff. Uh, Brennan Holmes, of course. Um, his ingenuity and work helps to bring amazing gameplay systems to the Mass Effect universe. Brennan is one of the many who want to bring you the game you deserve. As time goes on, you'll get to know more of us. And Derek Watts, of course, original art director for Mass Effect. He's back too, ready to rock. So a lot of the art, a lot of uh, uh, the, the looks of the game. We have Bre uh, Derek Watts to thank for that. So amazing again. Uh, the lady who does Lear's voice is also the lady that does the voice for one of the crew members in uh, Star Trek Resurgence. Ellie Hillis, she also does the voice for Lightning from Final Fantasy and a bunch of other characters. But I think those are his mo like her most notable is Liara and Lightning, I think. Um, 
any case, we're going to move up for a bit here. And then he, you know, he just posts a bunch of, uh, you know, smaller things. Uh, this one, which is actually the first look from the relay that I have uh, right here. Let's see here. There we go. There it is. Th that This is, seems to be like the final iteration, right? Uh, and this one was the first one. And uh, this is from a uh, the art of Mass Effect, I think it was called, or from Bioware's twenty five book is what it uh, what it was. Uh, and here, uh, Shinobi, uh, a huge fan of Mass Effect, by the way, uh, and uh, he says, right in concept art from the new game shows as much. This seems to be human designation MR seven Mass Relay seven, uh, and towards um, Michael, you know, you know responding with Derek would cry if he's uh, if he saw this is that a camera flash the humanity <laughs> yeah that was a pretty <laughs> shitty picture uh here have the real thing from Bioware 25 book shinobi is also wrong in the speculation so it might not mean human designation after all uh, or it might mean that it's not mass relay 7 it might be something else i think it's about the human designation that it's not particularly human made but that's just my you know uh, my ideas Moving on, we got the next N7 day, which was 2021, right? Yep. And this is the big poster, right? We got to talk about the big official poster. And I remember this day. It was so hectic. I was just going to work as always. And just boom, they dropped this on N7 day. And I was like, I was panicked. <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking about this poster at work. I couldn't concentrate. Uh, and so we're going to jump into this poster for a bit, you know, just to speculate a bit, because that's what we're going to do here. That's what I'm known for, I guess. <laughs> Speculation. Uh, let's see if I can find this thing that I, I was messing with it for a bit. There we go. I actually encircled a bunch of stuff here. So let's make this smaller so you guys can see. Okay, so first thing that I noticed on this poster, as most of you guys uh, noticed as well, is this geth shaped crater we talked about this on the last stream and we've talked about it several times but you know in case somebody is new here and hasn't seen this already here is this big poster which is obviously in the shape of a geth this crater and uh, inside this geth right we have a couple of more things that i that I outcropped, right? We have two bodies. It seems like that is one over here, up there. That's a geth. That's another geth, I think. And when you look closer, that looks like a quarian. So it would seem that this location uh, in particular has both quarians and geth for some reason. Maybe they're cooperating, maybe they're still fighting. Uh, and then we have another geth down here that I also encircled which was pretty obvious <laughs> at first. Uh, and then we have the different squad mates, of course. We can assume, now this is again, take this with a grain of salt, but that is probably Rex to the left there, the big guy with the red armor, most likely Rex. Uh, and at the front there, I would assume that's Liara. Then the two other ones I'm very unsure about. Uh, those are the two that I think you could say are up in the air. And I think the other two are essentially, you know, Liara and Rex. Uh, moving down, we have this new scout ship. Unsure if it's just a drop ship or, you know, what what type of ship is it? Uh, I would assume that it's in form of, and we talked about this on the last stream as well, that it's in form of drop ship and uh, it, it maybe detaches from the main ship. And according to Michael, the main ship or the next like his his most favorite ship in the mass effect franchise i think is something that we haven't seen before and we've seen this so it's probably not this so i would assume that the next ship is probably going to be more like the normandy or something and then this is sort of like a detachable scout ship of sorts which would be amazing and awesome because we've already seen one vehicle uh, which is uh, called the mud skipper i think uh, and, and that is the one uh, at the shot at the trailer there where you see the the other people standing next to the uh, the, the the vehicle and that is the I think that's the mud skipper if I if I'm correct about that um and then I think that those are essentially all the secrets that can be found in this one there are a bunch of other things like this <laughs> whole idea that there's a lot of hidden meanings like in 
and how like this poster was made with different shapes taking place but i just i just think that's just you know you see what you want to see but those are the ones that i think you could say essentially are confirmed these outlines right uh, i'm gonna jump right up here pizza you got it honey you got it <laughs> uh Imagine they announced that Mark Mayer is back, but we still wouldn't know if Shepard is back also because he voiced other species too. It'd be a savage move. Yeah, that would be a huge tease because you wouldn't know if he's just going to voice Hanar or if he's going to voice like the Volus or is he actually back as Shepard? The one thing that would really give it away would be obviously uh, Jennifer Hale. If they said that, yeah, she's back, then uh, obviously Shepard has some role. What that would be is a huge question. Or maybe, you know, uh, she would maybe just do what Mark did. Maybe just play additional voices. Maybe they would do one of those. <laughs> really, really big teases. Uh, can't unsee the smiley face on the ship. Wait, what? The smiley face. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. If you look at the ship, it looks like it has <laughs> two eyes and a smile down there right between <laughs> and my circles look like blushes <laughs> that's a good catch that's pretty funny actually any case let's jump back again uh then we have brandon holmes of course uh, mentioning unreal engine 5 i reported about uh, upon this for you know some time ago now but there were hints that bioware was going to use uh the unreal engine we'll go back to that from frostbite which we know has caused a lot of problems and especially with this not to bring everything down again but you guys know about the whole situation with the people that were laid off right so apparently one of the biggest difficulties for people that have been laid off from bioware you know that worked on dreadwolf or dragon age is the fact that they have used frostbite to <laughs> they've essentially mostly used frostbite as their tool nobody else uses frostbite except ea <laughs> studios <laughs> so <laughs> it's like i'm sorry I, I that that's just so bad you know being in that situation where you can't use your knowledge as really you know some of it you might be able to use but you can't really portray it in your uh cv is that what it's called in in english as well you can't really prove anything after like having used frostbite because nobody else uses it so i, I just want to bring up that point in particular and it's super sad that you know that's going to be a big problem for those people now that said i do think it's a good idea on the flip side of that that they're actually going back to unreal engine and we can essentially with brennan's uh tweet here sort of confirm that that is the case that they're indeed going with unreal engine 5. there is now i can't bring the uh, the the other um uh, uh, you know job articles up again because they're 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 not there anymore they're gone because they've you know they've filled the position so i can't bring those up those job posts but there has been several that have mentioned unreal engine over and over so it's just you know of course they're using unreal engine now and <laughs> then we have pc gamer that reported on it and we have the grub man himself jeff grub uh, who actually has sources throughout the industry and I, I i do i do trust what he says uh and he says unreal confirmed for mass effect just to confirm i've heard from a handful of sources now that this is the case obviously and this was a choice made by the team putting the game together which is how it should work and it kind of does make sense when you really think about it because some of these older mass effect veterans they're used to unreal and i don't know how much each of them has worked in Un unreal but i would say that it's probably very you know, it's very obvious that going back to the engine that they are used to would be a good idea overall for the team. And just, you know, Unreal Engine 5 just seems like such an amazing engine to use, albeit a little bit complicated. But also on the plus side, you will be able to use it on your CV when you then maybe, you know, look for work somewhere else, which is a good thing. God damn it, Frostbite. God damn it, EA. <laughs> Frostbite. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about that whole thing. 
Sorry, my face is tired. Yes, hopefully that's going to be buried in the dirt. We're not going to have to worry about my face is tired issues anymore. <laughs> I hope. I would assume that Bauer is going to use uh, the uh, the function, what's it called? Meta... Meta humans? Is it? Is that what it's called? Right? With uh, Unreal Engine, which will allow them to create realistic animations, at least for humans, and maybe a sorry. Uh, probably the best decision they've ever made using Unreal Engine 5. I think so too. Like from, from an outside perspective, not being a, develop a developer myself, it just... All the showcases, all the stuff I've seen about Unreal Engine 5, it just says... It just speaks volumes uh, that they've chosen to work with this engine instead. And I think it does for a lot of people, actually. Uh, I'm not a fan of UE5. Oh, 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 damn. Damn, Orc. <laughs> but I, I, I do think it's the, it's the right choice. It's at least some other engine. And they can't really use, uh, what's it called, Unity now? Because holy shit, that entire fiasco. Oh my god. So yeah, Unreal Engine 5 is probably the best bet right now. Uh, then we have uh, Leo Torres here. Actually, uh, covered him on my channel, and he made a little thing where uh, he essentially made Omega in Unreal Engine Five. Now, this is just a small little prototype thing, so it's not something, you know, it's not official or anything. But he just showcases how it could look like in the future. It's probably going to be much more detailed and advanced. But already, you're like, damn. I really want to see this. He actually made the effort to import, I think, uh, thermal clips, as you could see there on the ground, which is uh, the ammunition that Mass Effect uses, right? Which is awesome. So uh, I really like that as well. Uh, what's wrong with Unity? Well, I, I, I can't go into it here, but it, just look it up. It's been a big talking point all across the internet for a while now. But yeah, maybe they changed their policy, I don't know. But still, I just think that Unreal Engine 5 just shows such huge potential, uh, especially for a game like Mass Effect, uh, you know, which is heavily dialogue driven. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And this little, you know, video, of course, just gives a little, you know, a little taste of what we could look forward to. Again, this is just one guy who's making a fan thing but I'm already like, Jesus, I gotta see this. <laughs> now, graphics uh, only do so much, however, and the most important part is gonna be, you know, how does it run? Is it fun? Is the gameplay flowy? Is it good? Is it impactful? Is the sound design great? Is it punchy? You know, all those things combined make a good game as well, like good gameplay at least. So, and then art style, of course. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see. And yeah, I know Unity's uh, CEO had to had to go. That was uh, supposedly the the thing. Uh, then we have Michael Tucker, who announced. And in case you don't know who this is, <laughs> uh, he is a YouTuber. So I guess you could say he's a colleague. Not really, but we're kind of working in the same sort of niche. Uh, but he. Um, he announced that he's working on the next game and he's really good at writing screenplays. You should see, like, I'm a big fan of the whole, uh, uh, you know, Mass Effect Game of Thrones comparison video he made. It's so amazing. Uh, he's saying, been getting questions recently about what I've been up to, so I'm excited to share that I'm working with Bioware on the next installment of Mass Effect. Can't say anything more for now other than I'm thrilled to be working with Gamble Mike, Parrish Lee, and the whole team. This was one of those things where I was like blown away. I did not expect them to go uh, and hire a YouTuber. Uh, maybe they didn't, didn't hire him. That's uh, I'm not sure if it says uh, if, if, if he's officially hired, but uh, maybe he's just, you know, a uh, um, what do you call it? Somebody who just uh, helps at the side. I don't know. Something like that. Do you want the OG squad mates to return? Of course, absolutely. In case it makes sense, you know. If it doesn't make sense, then yeah, I'm not sure. What engine Baldur's Gate 3 uses? I think it's an internal engine that they've used for Divinity as well. Contractor, freelancer, yeah, something like that. Maybe Michael is just that, but uh, from what I've seen from Michael, uh, um, Gamble, that is, Michael and Michael, 
is uh, that Tucker uh, has helped a lot, seemingly, according to one tweet that Michael made. I don't know if I brought it up here, but it essentially said that uh, it's official that Michael Tucker is amazing. So it seems like there is something that Michael Tucker did or an issue that he solved that made uh, Mr. Gamble, Mr. Mr. Big Daddy uh, project director himself go, this is amazing. So who knows? Maybe Michael Tucker is the one who essentially solved how we go from the trilogy to a new game. Who knows? Who knows? But I'm just, you know, I can assume that's something. Uh, Bioware hired the other guy from their YouTube channel too, so there's two. Um, the other guy from the- oh, you mean the- the- right, they're two- they're two guys, right. Uh, consultant. Right, consultant. That would probably be it, I would assume. It's official, he's amazing, right, yeah, that's what he said. Uh, then... Uh, we had Michael Gamble saying this. Uh, today's content review focused on what the daycare center in the Death Star must have been like. Slime shaders. And trying to figure out exactly where the face on a thing was. Of course, it's just vague posting again. Uh, come join the team we're hiring. This was uh, more than a year ago. So I hope they have gotten far enough uh, from then. But what really stuck out to me was what the daycare center in the Death Star must have been. That made me think instantly of that theory thing I talked about a while ago with the with the whole thing um, with the with the next mass uh, you know the 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 teaser right the next and seven teaser and we're getting to that I'm gonna go back to this in a moment <laughs> but I, but I got like you know wow this was like a you know switch went off uh, in any case Michael Gamble says, oh, hey, I'm really excited to let you know that Mary DeMarle will be joining the Mass Effect team as senior narrative director. You've seen her work in Guardians of the Galaxy and Deus Ex, to name a few. She's amazing. And Mary DeMarle, of course, here she is. She is an excellent writer and ex just, as he said, narrative director now. So that's huge. That's a huge W for people who especially love the Deus Ex games or... Uh, that is Human Revolution and Mankind Divided, and of course we had uh, Guardians of the Galaxy game that uh, won, was it Best Story, I think, or Best Screenplay? I don't remember exactly which, but if you want good writing, then she, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with Mary DeMarl. Uh, just a moment. No, I can't. I gotta check out what you guys are saying. Uh, BG3 uses Divinity Engine 3.0. Right, uh, yeah, it's an in-house engine, right? Uh, how high is the chances that the game will be completely different from the teasers after its release? There is so much time in between they could write something different. True! Yeah. If we look at it logically, there is a probability, like I guess it's a 50-50, that it's going to be completely entirely different than what we've seen. But I don't think so, because... According to Michael, there's been this sentiment that they're like building towards giving us something uh, that is gonna be at play in the game. And I think even the video for the next, you know, the, the small teaser video uh, from 2022, last year, is uh, something that comes from the game, essentially. Sort of like that sort of in-game uh, cinematic of, of, uh, of uh, what's his name again? Solas? in Dragon Age Dreadwolf, but uh, we'll have to see, I guess. But yeah, I, I, th I think it's more uh, along the lines that he's just planting seeds of things that are going to matter, but he's very, like, the entire team is super careful about what they're sharing, of course, as they usually are. I think, I don't think that anything is going to be, like, completely super different that, oh, Liara's not going to make it. Uh, they're just going to set everything in the Andromeda Galaxy again. It's not going to have anything to do with the Milky Way. I, I I don't think that's something you have to worry about, especially. Um, can't be much different because we barely see anything. True, in a way. In a way. <laughs> there we go. I just had to check. Uh, hopefully Mike uh, Mike didn't just say that there's another clue in the poster just to keep us speculating. That would be diabolical. Yeah, that would be um, very unfortunate. 
So I, yeah, I, I, I very much just doubt it. I don't really have any evidence to, call, you know, go against that idea, but I just don't think that he would do that. That would be way too, I don't know, off-putting in a way to, you know, to, to put it bluntly. Anyway, let's go back to the little Twitter thing here. Uh, we had Marilyn Marl, and then we had Michael doing this little vague posting again, which was uh, two galaxies colliding. Uh, Massimo said the left galaxy is the Milky Way, the right one is the Andromeda galaxy. This is what would happen within four to five billion years from now. <laughs> of course, not at that speed. That's a hyper, like hyper, uh, sped up simulation essentially. But yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> and then we had Michael doing this. <laughs> a lot of people just assume that. Oh, does that mean that they're gonna like? collide in you know the next mass effect is they're gonna be like a dark energy thing where they're just gonna you know mash together two galaxies i think it's just he's just being uh a little uh of course as he always is vague about this idea that the two galaxies are gonna meet somehow i just think that's essentially what he's trying to say here hang how you doing man welcome um I don't care if it's the same game or not, a continuation or not, uh, with Shepard not, but I do really want it to be well written with a great villain and great companions. Absolutely agreed, Elias. You're right on the money. Same here. As long as the writing is excellent, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I love Shepard so much, but the Mass Effect universe can be so much more than just um, the Shepard simulator. <laughs> Right? And I've I have high hopes now for, for the future. Now we're not done here, not nearly. But thank you, Hung, by the way, for the five gifted you absolute boss. I'm gonna add you up here just uh, in case you guys are new here. Anyone is new here? I doubt anyone actually is. But I usually do this because I haven't uh, I haven't added this, like a sort of automatic thing that can put up people who have gifted memberships or joined. So I put you guys here. Maybe I should just write absolute specters. There we go. Hung. I'm going to just move you down here. There. Nice. That's nice, I think. That looks pretty good. Uh, Zach, by the way, welcome, bro. Uh, I networked at Lightbox Expo, made connections with people from Avatar 2, Way of Water, Lucasfilm crew, and made friends with Riot Art team members. Great results from my network. Nice, hun. Congratulations. God damn. From Lucasfilm? God damn. <laughs> and Riot as well. Aren't those the people that uh, made uh, Arcane? Or League of Legends? That's the right studio, right? Demon with the five gifted. You absolute boss, you. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> There we go. Uh, could we expect to see a trailer for N7-8? No. I would say no. I'm just going to bluntly say no. I don't think there's going to be a trailer. I'm, I'm super sure there's not going to be a trailer. Michael, if you're seeing this, yes, please give us the trailer. Yes. <laughs> I would love to see a trailer. I think Kala would love to see a trailer. Big Dan, the man himself, would like to see a trailer. All of us, you know, Mass Effect, uh, not only content creators, but everybody would like a teaser trailer. But I think it's too soon. And, you know, that's why I'm saying is that I, I would love to have a teaser trailer to talk about because, you know, I have a channel to run. I have stuff, you know, I have videos to produce so I can make money, so I can <laughs> pay the rent and stuff like that. But I still think it's too early in case they haven't really gotten anywhere. So I would... I would be more glad if they showed the next trailer whenever they feel like yes, now we feel like we're we're at the we're at the situation where we can actually so show something and we know that it's going to be in the final game that this is not just some small teaser this is not going to be completely different from what people see like the I would much prefer that over you know getting a teaser trailer <laughs> having stuff to talk about. I just want the game to be amazing. I just want it to be good. I just want it back to form because that that's more important to me, uh, I guess, just as an average Joe, I guess. 
uh, and I know you guys would like a trailer as well, but again, I, you know, I just, I'm just going to say it because I guess I have some influence. I just do it whenever you guys think it's ready, not to just push it out. I think most people are super excited for the next game, no matter what. So the hype is still going to be there. As long as the trailer comes out, as long as the game comes out, I think most of us are going to be super glad, super excited anyway, because there are so many people that love this franchise, right? Uh, I need a, need a trailer, but I doubt we'll get one. I do wonder if we get a TV show announcement, though. Oh, I would love that because Bioware doesn't really have to handle a show unless they have a couple of people that actually know how the universe works and how it should feel like. You know, they, of course, you need people that know the franchise to make a TV show. And yeah, absolutely. Please do give me that. What do you think about Squadron 42? I have not played it. Maybe not a trailer, but maybe a little teaser of the issue or time frame. Yeah, for sure. I th and I think it's going to be something like that again, I think. Uh, they should take all the time they need better than rushed game. Yes, very true. Are you playing on another full playthrough of some game? I think you did not finish BG3. I have finished it. Uh, I just haven't finished my Dark Urge playthrough yet. But that's also the thing, you know, I got to have... In case I, I do a playthrough, uh, it needs to be something that people actually watch. And from what I could understand, people are not necessarily super interested in me playing Baldur's Gate. So that's why I haven't played it, honestly. Just the, there's really no <laughs> demand for it on the channel. Um, so that that's basically why, I guess. But that's also kind of why I put so much effort into making mod videos and stuff, because that seems to be something people want to see. Uh, mentally preparing myself for absolute disappointment. You should always be prepared, but you can still be hyped. It's still, um, come on, it's N7 day. And ever since they announced the game, they've shown something. So I think you can expect that at least. And Michael even said as much. Uh, just re like, like very recently, I'll go to that in just a moment, that he's thinking about it, right? Anyway, here was the next N7 Day uh, teaser, which was the thing we got last year. And it actually was, as I said, it is a short video, basically just a still image video, I guess. Uh, but uh, but yeah, there here's the video, right? And it is, of course, you know, naturally it is a mass relay that we can assume. And this one was, um, when it was posted, it had very garbled sound, right? So it was distorted. You couldn't hear anything. It was just a bunch of noise. But then uh, somebody, I don't remember who it was exactly, but I think I talked about it back, uh, you know, back in 2022. Uh, somebody who decoded the audio transmission and uh, we're going to listen to that as well. Let's do it. Let's do it. There we go. I can see How did we miss this? Exactly. The council will be furious. Although they should know by now not to underestimate human defiance. It helps was the most living fit. That last part ha still has me super confused. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know if you guys noticed what she's saying there at the end. But there apparently is something that Liara and seemingly the Geth have missed. So I would assume uh, that... The Geth and Liara are working together, so the Geth are probably, you know, they're the nice Geth. How they survived, uh, you know, is a big question, but that also depends on what ending uh, they're going with, or if they're going with all three endings, who knows. But in any case, uh, there seems to be a contact between the two, and there seems to be an issue, and humanity is again <laughs> either fucking things up, or they're involved in something huge that they need to investigate. And I think that's what they're doing here because we see that ship uh, going to the relay, right? We see this ship right here. Uh, and that I think that's the scout ship, right? You guys can't see it maybe? Maybe on the way. See that? There's the ship, right? See that ship? That is the scout ship, I think. And I think it's like in, it's going to this relay to investigate what this thing is. Or something, uh, you know, along those lines. That's just my assumption. 
uh, I'm just going to change here and I'm going to move over to the, the relay circles. Oh my God. No, I messed everything up. Let's make this smaller because it's too big for my, <laughs> for my OBS. Sorry guys. I'm a clown. Uh, I'll read the, I, I'll read the gifted in a moment. Sorry guys. <laughs> This is actually more difficult than you think. Hey, Mr. Anyway, uh, going back here, let's see here. Ezra Slabog, hey man. Did I say that right? <laughs> Appreciate the 10 gifted. You absolute specter. I'm going to put you up here as well. Thank you to Ezra, everybody. W's for Ezra there. Let's go. Um, and we're going to put you guys up here. Oh, right. Can have you guys on my chest right here, right on my, uh, right on my boobas. I think you guys appreciate that, right? <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to make myself a little bit bigger. Uh, and uh, Ron Harrington with the five bucks. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Hilton, will they remove the loading screens? <laughs> uh, there's probably going to be loading screens. Probably not as much as Starfield, though, I hope. But uh, since it's, you know, it's a different engine, so who knows? Um, but there's probably going to be... Uh, <laughs> loading screens for sure i hope i really hope there are just a few of them uh in any case let's uh let's check out this little image right and there we go as you guys can see here i've circled uh, a number of things now first of all we gotta just right i've said this before but this is obviously a mass relay this this isn't anything else to anyone else right this is a relay <laughs> I mean, look at the big circle there. It's It's got to be. And it's under constru construction because we see a bunch of ships, right? Uh, these over here, I talked about these as well in another theory video. And uh, at first I was like, are these arcs? I, I don't know if it was Kala who mentioned it first, uh, but I think somebody else mentioned it first. But these do look like the arcs in a way. I don't think that they are though, because this ship to the left, right up there, to the left of them, the circled one, uh, looks like the same ship. So, and that does not really look like an arc. Um, so that would mean that there would be four arcs. The question is, you know, are these the same arcs that we're seeing in Andromeda? But then again, not all of them survived. So yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but it could be arcs. And in that case, that would mean that this was built uh, in the Andromeda galaxy. However, the things to counter that is if we go down here and we see these numbers as well in the middle of the screen, right? This is something that people have been wondering about. These seems like loading base, I would assume, where ships can dock and stuff like that. And for some reason, it's pointed at four. <laughs> and I've seen theories about that meaning, oh, they're saying that it's Mass Effect 4. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> Uh, unless, you know, they were just telling us that they were planning to do a, a quadrology instead, like a Mass Effect 4, 5, 6, and 7, or maybe, I, I don't know, it's just, it's, <laughs> I don't believe that's, uh, there's anything to go by there, I just think these are loading base, I don't think they're meant to uh, say anything significant. Uh, then we had this part right uh, to the left right there, directly to the left, which kind of looks like the the red and uh, white and seven stripe uh, in the reflection. It's pretty hard to see, I know, but it kind of looks like a reflection. Supposedly, I've heard this, I don't know where I can find the source for this, but this entire footage is supposedly uh, like a recording in game. Now, I don't know where I saw that comment, but I, I'm pretty sure it was from somebody official or something. I don't know, or maybe it is, a recording because we have these things down here. I'm just going to move the mass relay here. We have the uh, we have uh, these numbers down here, right? Where it says a bunch of inter information, and it looks like it is a video file, and it is an in-game video file, right? So here it seems to say the date over there, file bat, uh, and. Uh, here you can almost like assume is this just a couple of years after uh the reaper war because it says 11 07 90. now 11 07 i think is uh, obviously it's the 7th of november so it's supposed to represent and seven day of course that's a small a teaser towards that 
but 90, that's very interesting. Is it actually saying the date here or is it just saying the date where the video was captured? Because that doesn't mean that this, uh, this video file is the actual year of the game taking place. This is just, it's, this seems to be the year that this was recorded in universe, so to speak. And then to the left, we have SA314. Now 314 is a mass relay, you know, one of these big things that with spinny rings, the, <laughs> the, the whole, uh, you know, all the, the big structures that allow people to go from 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 one part of the galaxy to another part of the galaxy and instantaneously, right? Uh, and 314 was one relay uh, that uh, essentially started the first contact war. That was what introduced humanity uh, to get, you know, with uh, the Turians, which is, an, uh, you know, a race from Mass Effect, of course. For anyone who may be new here, I'm just, you know, just giving out some lore while doing that. So essentially, this 314 relay uh, incident uh, was the first contact war, which led to humanity being introduced to all the other races in the galaxy. The question is, is this being built in uh, in the system where uh, the Relay 314 incident took place? Or is Michael and the team just teasing us with the idea that we're going to have a similar situation on our hands? The 314 incident where essentially, you know, humanity tried to open a, a relay that it was inactive and that is illegal in citadel space okay so you're not allowed to activate inactive relays because that might introduce the galaxy to a hostile species and nobody wants that right <laughs> so it might be a tease towards another sort of you know first contact situation which would be great i would love to say that i just love exploring new species and we we gotta see new species man come on we gotta see something new i mean i love all the all the races we've seen in mass effect so far but we gotta see the galaxy expand and i think just you know introducing new species a bunch of them it's just it's just the way to go man uh i gotta go back to the comments here uh, they did the same thing with the halo series it's called halo reach not halo zero mass effect 4 makes more sense maybe it does maybe it does uh, right, Bioris called it Mass Effect 5, which is why I said it's Mass Effect 5. Uh, yeah, it says that, I think it says that on the tags of the Mass Effect teaser trailer, the one we watched at the beginning of the stream. Uh, it actually says in the tags that it's Mass Effect 5. I don't think it's going to be either. I think it's going to be Mass Effect 4. I don't think it's going to be Mass Effect 5. I think they're just going to do what they did with Andromeda and call it something else, I guess, you know, just a sort of a reference to what the game is going to be about. I think it's going to be something along those lines instead. Uh, I want flying whales. <laughs> well, that's not uh, in, you know, outside the realms of possibility because we've I mean, we've seen that in Star Wars, so, but, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Could be cool, could be cool. I think they're just going to call it Mass Effect. Very true, it might just be what the title is. It's probably just going to be Mass Effect. A lot of games have done that, right? Just look at God of War. It doesn't say God of War uh, 2018. It doesn't say uh, God of War, a new... Um, a new world or Norwegian or Nordic or, or is anything like that. It just says God of War. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of games are, you know, going to keep doing that is that they're, they're essentially going to be sequels, but they're going to just call it by the regular title because everybody is going to know that it's going to be a Mass Effect game nonetheless. So it doesn't really matter which they use really. Uh, it's in the metadata, the text, the concept art. It'll be called five until it's named, just like by called Andromeda four until it got its name. Yeah. Oh no, it, I'm 50 minutes late. Let's see if I can catch up to <laughs> XP. You can watch it later. You can watch it later, but we're sort of halfway through, I think. Uh, anyway, I, did I circle something else in this big image? Right. Then there was the MR7, which uh, a lot of people, including me, assume is Mass Relay 7, I think. That's pretty obvious that it says that. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it says something else. But I think that's what it says. And then we have the ship encircled, which, again, 
I think it's the same ship from the poster. Uh, moving on, I think that's essentially all the different teasers we see in this image. There are a bunch of other ships as well, which are obviously construction ships. Uh, the planet is a big question, of course. I think it actually has sort of the same coloration as Shanxi, which is a witch. I, th I think Shanxi is either the planet or the city. I think it's the planet that is in the 314 incident system. So it's possible that, you know, that's Shanxi. And if that's Shanxi, then we are in the 314 incident system, which could mean that we're going to see what happens when you activate the 314 relay who knows <laughs> um Cerberus colors yes indeed Cerberus colors I think that's pretty obvious as well and I also think that's that was like um very intentional to make us think of Cerberus I'm pretty sure because it's orange and black I can't think of anything else in Mass Effect that is orange and black it's literally Cerberus colors and then over there we have the the black and orange stripes as well, or yellow, orange, but that, it's essentially their colors, right? <clears throat> but we also know from the ending uh, that if uh, I think Miranda survives, she takes over uh, Cerberus, I think, or she leads a part of humanity or something, uh, which makes sense. You know, I think that's what happens. You guys can correct me there. Uh, I don't really remember, but I know that uh, uh, it seems like Cerberus is in in case the you know the the whole organization survives it could be sort of transformed to uh you know to do good i guess uh mass Effect four years later <laughs> that would be kind of obvious uh yo roll on n7 and d4 hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah let's not forget about dragon age as well which probably comes out next year but we'll see we'll see uh, together with N7 2022, we of course have uh, this other image that is uh, stickied on Michael's uh, profile. And um, of course, uh, it seems like this image has some uh, importance <laughs> if we just uh, regard the fact that Michael still has it stickied to his profile. So yeah, this seems to be, at first glance, I would assume that this is some form of uh, a sorry planet because the 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 structures and the architecture looks very sorry like in nature. But then again, there seems to be something weird with the atmosphere because as you can see here, they're wearing gas masks or something of the similar uh, nature. Same with the Turian here, right? So. Yeah, there, this seems to be sort of like, I, I don't know if you could call it toxic, but it's definitely not a healthy planet to be on, it would seem. <laughs> and then we have this little piece right here. You guys see that? Solar. Now, that might just be a uh, general uh, art that they're using that's been in the Mass Effect universe before. But I think it says Solar Electronics, which is the store, I think, on Omega. So it's possible that this is Omega. But I think solar electronics are also on other planets as well. They're a pretty, you know, uh, used uh, brand in the massive universe, I think. Uh, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it also in Andromeda? Um, it seems like it says Omni Tools below it as well. I'm not sure. But again, this is pr that is probably just, you know, general art, but it could also be... Uh, from a location we might see in the game which would be amazing because this looks like a fucking cool place to walk around in imagine that huh <laughs> uh samara was in her matron age in me3 so no ample asari what what is ample asari what does ample mean what, what do you mean I'm I'm sorry I'm I'm not English so so some some uh, some 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 words are alien to me somewhat. Uh, the cars looked pretty much the same in Mass Effect Two and Mass Effect Three, so it couldn't have been too far in the future, unless again it's just general art, you know. Maybe it's just, um, you know, stuff they've just reused. But then again, you know, if we look at this with you know with just face value. Yeah, I would assume that's the case, that this isn't too far in the future, because those are those are the same sky cars that uh, the trilogy uses, right? 
Uh, Ron with the five bucks again. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. And can my choices in my Mass Effect Legendary Edition game have an impact in the next Mass Effect game? I really hope that is the case. That would be lovely to see, like, you know, things that you did in the trilogy actually mattering in the next game. I know that it's much easier to just do a fresh restart of sorts where you don't really see the choices that much because maybe it's set so far into the future or maybe it's just following somebody else, some and other team or something, so we don't really see that. But it would be nice to see that, you know, they reference some of your choices. That would be great. <clears throat> Ample means abundant. Uh, oh, okay. Should <laughs> write an extra thing. <laughs> I really do hope we get to see some ample Asari. That would be lovely. I would like to see more ample people overall in Mass Effect. But then again, you know, we've already had that with a couple of characters. <laughs> that is one thing that I absolutely love about, love about Mass Effect is the design of a lot of the spacesuits and characters. I mean, some, you know, um, ED, hey. Samara, uh, hey, hell yeah, hell yeah, Samara. Uh, then we have this little thing, right? Which was, uh, again, another concept. I think, you know, I'm thinking this might be the same planet. Maybe it's not because the, the architecture is not exactly the same. But here we see, again, some of that, you know, Asari architecture on display. Let's uh, hop back here. See if I can find it in my files. Ba, 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 ba. circles there we go there we go look at this beautiful thing and here we have some signs uh that supposedly we see throughout the trilogy i'm not sure about the up one to the left there but i know i think that one right above me there that is something we've seen before the right one i don't think we've seen before there is an asari right there of course and then up here to the right, it says SFX5. And as we all know now, SFX was the um, prototype name for Mass Effect before it was Mass Effect. So it was Science Fiction X. And here it says, well, essentially, Science Fiction X5 again. Maybe that's a code word for something else. But I, again, I think it's so intentional that it says SFX5. It's got to mean something, right? It's, it's just, it just got to be. It just got to be. Uh, let's pop down here. Here it says, uh, I think it says 5TX here. So I don't think it says SFX. It's a little bit hard to see. But I think, uh, yeah, it says 5TX. Uh, that's probably just the call sign of the, uh, of the cab or the vehicle or whatever. Still, you know, interesting nonetheless. And that's essentially all the details I found on this one. But it does look like, again, maybe it's Omega because it has this red atmosphere. Maybe it's the same planet as the one before that uh, Michael has on his profile. That would make sense. Uh, BG3 proved that horniness <laughs> equals game of the year. I'm pretty sure Mass will follow trend. I think more adult games just shouldn't hold back uh if it fits the whole uh well structure of the game you know what they're trying to make if it fits the vision and if it makes you feel more engrossed into the universe then i'm all for it i mean look at cyberpunk that's always something that i keep chuckling at is whenever i see somebody else making like a thirst mod video or whenever i make a thirst mod video or anybody plays cyberpunk the game is sexualized to number 11 it's so over the top that whenever i see somebody being like oh yeah, no, this is not for me. This is too th this mod is too thirsty for me. Motherfuck, you are playing the dirtiest game that has ever been released and you're complaining about a mod that is a little thirsty for stop. Can we all just stop pretending, okay, for a moment? <laughs> a lot of people that play the Mass Effect trilogy, the, the Dragon Age, Age, Age games, we're all just fucking thirsty. What's what's wrong with that stop it's annoying you're you're pretending that you're not it's irritating to see stop it's fine it's fucking fine to be horny stop making a deal out of it <laughs> that is the one that ticks me off so much 
And that is the one thing I just keep popping back to. I know it's like a sort of irrelevant, but thinking about that Fox news uh, thing they did on Mass Effect back in the day, God damn, I was so angry when I saw that. It's like, stop being such a fucking wuss. We're all horny, <laughs> stop. It's irritating. It's irritating to see, and it's just... It just screams that you're being fake when you're saying that, oh, this is too much for me. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's a little bit ranty, but I just gotta say it. Stop pretending, okay? Stop. It's, uh... <laughs> You don't have to go overboard. I very much agree with that. I don't need to see stuff everywhere, which is another reason why I kind of, you know, swapped out all the uh, <laughs> the, the in-game ads in Cyberpunk to other stuff because I just think it's so much in your face that it just got a little annoying after a while. But really, you know, when when it all comes down to it, yeah, it's optional content. Yeah, you don't have to do that stuff. <laughs> If it says 18 plus, don't complain. Very true. Very true. Stop complaining. <laughs> okay, anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that Bioware, for God's sakes, fucking go all out. Baldur's Gate 3, Larian did it. You guys can do it as well. Don't be scared. The hornier, the better. Ah, uh, yes, learn from the Swedish about the natural connection to their physical body. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, <laughs> the mm -hmm ads in Cyberpunk were funny, though. They, they, they are. They are. <laughs> They're so over the top that it becomes, like, a silly. And that, that could be funny. I don't think that fits for Mass Effect. I don't really want to see that <laughs> in Mass Effect. Uh, I, I do want to see what makes Mass Effect special, but I, I'm just worried for a little bit there that they're going to hold back a bit when it comes to romance and, you know, sex scenes and stuff like that. And, you know, with Baldur's Gate 3, it just made me, you know, just happy to see that nobody gives a shit. Everybody's going to play it anyway. So, hey, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just the best. Um, th that's the rant for today. Right. I just wanted to tell Bioware that don't be worried. Just push it. Push it, at, you know, not as hard as you can, but do do what Baldur's Gate and what uh, Cyberpunk did. It's fine. You don't need to worry. Uh, and then we had Michael being a tease again. <laughs> uh, saying, if only they knew where we were going with, you know, Bioware doing this. Does anyone have big travel plans this year? Being a tease again. But he's hinting it towards something huge. Uh, what that is, is just, I have no idea. Or, well, I have ideas, but they're probably, none of them going to be, you know, very accurate. But it's going to be huge, probably. <laughs> and here, you know, going back to this whole rant about stuff, like we saw in Baldur's Gate. Well, Baldur's Gate 3 is everything I wanted it to be and more. As a fan, it gets me excited. Look at this man. Look at this... Look at this dude, look at this boss, as a developer, gets me excited. Even if you aren't into D&D, &D, you should give it a try. This was the right attitude to have as a gaming dev. Fucking, the overlord of Mass Effect right now is excited because of Baldur's Gate, both as a fan as a developer, and that should excite you too. It should, because that means that Bioware and the team, Michael Gamble and the team, they're looking at Baldur's Gate being like, hmm, we should probably take a few things from that, you know, take a few lessons from that because Baldur's Gate 3, you know, does very much borrow elements from Dragon Age, from Mass Effect. I, you know, with the cinematic RPG, the dialogue options, I do very much think that they looked at some of the best games from Bioware and they were like, yeah, let's do that and modernize it. That would be amazing. And just, you know, I just love it when this happens, seeing devs praise each other. <clears throat> yeah, he's a man of culture. Michael Gamble is a man of culture. This is why that entire rant is especially important, because that means that they're probably not going to hold back. <laughs> anyway, let's move forward. 
Uh, here we see that little callback uh, that I mentioned before, about 30 minutes into Assassin's Creed Mirage, but I think this might be my favorite setting next to Black Flag in the music. Incredible. I have not played Assassin's Creed Mirage. I have no idea if it's good or not, but Michael likes it, so hey, why not? And yes, of course, I'm thinking about N7 Day, which got twice as many likes than his first tweet. I mean, come on, everybody knows that <laughs> you're gonna... You're going to get more, way more likes for that because, of course, he's the leader for the next Mass Effect, so yeah. But uh, this is essentially confirmation that it's going to be something, at least, that he's been thinking about it. And yes, he knew that people were going to be on him about this. So we can probably look forward to something. What that is again, unsure. Small tease. Uh, we go back to this little unreal tease again where Michael went ahead and responded to anyone creating games with metahumans in ue5 what are some challenges you would like us to tackle in future releases and of course he um he comments with a solarian and as, as far as i remember some i don't know who said it but supposedly solarians were notably difficult to render or animate uh in uh, the master trilogy and even andromeda I don't know, again, you know, I'm just spitting out uh, things I've heard here, but the, I, I, if you guys have any source to it, that would be great. But as far as I know, it's supposedly they were very difficult to animate. So I would assume that is the case here as well, and it would make the process even easier if they're going to have a bunch of Solarians in the game, if they can use metahumans. That would just make everything much easier. I don't think they're going to be able to use metahumans for the Solarians, though, because obviously they're not human, so it's probably going to be very, very difficult in comparison. Um, there, guys, come on. <laughs> David Gitter said BG3 is a worthy successor for the original Baldur's Gate games, and he played it. The thing is, I didn't play the old Baldur's Gate games. So I wouldn't know. Uh, if they, you know, are worth, like if BG3 is a worthy successor. I'm just, you know, after having played it myself, I just think it's, it's just leagues above anything. Well, well, not anything, but uh, over most games that have been released these past few years. So just as a, you know, standalone installment, I think it's just much better than a lot of that we've seen these past few years. But uh, yeah, I got to play the first Baldur's Gate games. But again, they're so old. So it like takes a lot of effort <laughs> to actually sit down and get into older games. I'm like, I'm one of those people uh, that have like a huge difficulty doing that with older, older games that are not really 3D in the way that we have things right now. Uh, I don't think you would enjoy the old games, even if they are not turn-based. Uh, yeah, that's the that's what I'm kind of you know worrying about myself. Uh, but I would really like to try. <laughs> but again, it's got to be you know it's got to be like worth it. Maybe I should do a video like reviewing the old Baldur's Gate games. I think Wolfheart made a couple of videos on it, or at least one video. Uh, so hey. As far as he, as far as I know, the the story is amazing in those games, just as they always were back then. But uh, these are essentially all the things that we've seen from Michael so far, I think. And um, there are smaller teases here and there, but they're just mostly vague posting like this one. Uh, so I can't really say much about that, but from what we can assume is that, again, we've talked about this before, there's some form of relay at play here. Uh, there is something about, about a new ship. Uh, there seems to be an assumption that Cerberus in, is involved somehow. Uh, there's a lot of like uh, smaller details we've seen, and even in the teaser trailer with Liara, there seems to be like a it, that it's going to be, you know, taken place after the Reaper War, how far into the future, it's hard to say, but according to this footage, that would put it maybe like a, what is it, two, three years in the future after Mass Effect 3. Uh, and then a bunch of concept, but again, as Michael has pointed out, there is meaning in these theses. So for all of you naysayers to say, nah, it's going to be, these are just nostalgia bait. This is just stuff to make you think about. It's not going to be, uh, uh, nah, mm, let me stop you right there. I'm pretty sure this has some form of meaning. How much is very hard to say. But I don't think you can just throw that away. 
Uh, Josh Strife Hayes made a Baldur's Gate game review. I gotta check that out. See what he has to say about it. Should bring weed in the game just for laughs. I don't know. I, I doubt, I somehow doubt that they're gonna place the game uh, too much like in at Earth and stuff. Maybe it could be like a little, you know, small joke or a jab or like, or something. Like it's a it's an Earth thing. It's a human thing. Uh, maybe wasn't there like a, a a character in Andromeda, where they essentially had a big factory, like on a planet somewhere, Kedar, I think. Uh, so if we can go off of the last N seven A, we expect another tease with pictures and maybe a small video with some encoded messages for people to uncover. Something like that. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Elden Ring would like a word, my Swedish brother. Uh, about uh, what exactly? I'm hoping that they will be able to use MetaHuman for the Asari because the models in Andromeda were uh, <laughs> atrocious. Yeah, I, I, uh, I assume that they're going to be able to use it for like human-like people. In the game, so humans, sorry, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Everyone else uh, looks vastly different compared to humans and sorry. So yeah, yeah, you think uh, yeah, I, I would probably assume that they're gonna have an easier time animating sorry and stuff. But uh, but but Salarians, Turians, um, Krogan, uh, Volus, but that's really not an issue if they're still wearing their masks. Uh, Hanar, of course. <laughs> um, the Drell. Geth. Well, Drell. Drell could, I could I could imagine Drell being something that they could use metahuman for because they have the same familiar structure to their to their heads like humans have, albeit with a bunch of fins and stuff. Uh no Ari Aria romance no by. <laughs> That would be lovely. But I think we sort of already had that for a little bit in Mass Effect 3. You know, there is a possibility of you, you know, being able to make out with her if you uh, do everything right, according to Arya's books. So it's a little taste of a romance there with her. Unfortunately, it's not complete. Yeah, Drell are similar to humans. Yeah, I would assume that they're probably going to be able to use that. If the Drell even return, that is also the question. And maybe we get new races that are more familiar to humans as well, you know. So that would be cool to see. Like, I'm, I'm not against uh, species that look vaguely human. Uh, it's just um, when there's too many races that look too human, that's kind of when, like, my uh, immersion gets kind of thrown off. So... Uh, I'm in love with the concept of alien looking aliens that still look like they uh, went through like an evolutionary process and, you know, ended up as bipeds. I think uh, that's that's something that really that I really jive with. But uh, when it's way too human at times that, yeah, throws me off a bit. But I'm fine with uh, with the Asari and the Drell, for example. Uh, <laughs> Leviathan Shrub. <laughs> You are not ready. <clears throat> uh, what about the Yog? True. They might even be a big thing in the next game because they're so violent and dangerous. Let's bring him up for a moment. I would love to see the Yog. Um, see, so I don't get any dirty results here because, you know, Google... <laughs> There we go. Oh, hell yeah. Give me a Yog, man. Uh, a Yog squad mate. That would kind of be overpowered, though. Because, I mean, the Shadow Broker, he's super strong. Now, he's a fairly easy, uh, simple uh, boss encounter, really. But he's freaking cool. And, you know, in-universe, he's almost unstoppable. So something... I, I love things like this, right? <laughs> it's like a power lifter sort of in an alien form um 
Yogg Romance, Elk Romance. You guys want to go crazy with the next game, huh? <laughs> you guys just want to bang everything. Uh, and the Reapers wouldn't have hit the Yogg homeworld. Maybe, but unless they didn't purge the Yogg homeworld. I don't know if that's mentioned in the trilogy. <laughs> no, I'm not going to put in that, Josh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> How about a tiny alien companion instead? That would be cool. Like, uh, uh, what's his name? The little, the little space hamster, uh, in Baldur's Gate 3. He, what's his name again? In case you didn't know, like, if you played Baldur's Gate 3, um, you encounter a little hamster. Can't really say exactly, uh, who, or maybe I should, I don't know. But in any case, that hamster supposedly appears in uh, the old Baldur's Gate games and the hamster you get in Mass Effect is a small easter egg uh, towards that very hamster so it's like a space hamster right and they say that in Baldur's Gate 3 as well that the hamster is a I think it's a giant space hamster which I think is a reference to Mass Effect when you really think about it so yeah, miniature space hamster, right. So uh, I, I really like stuff like that. That obviously seems like a nod towards Mass Effect. I, I think that's, uh, or maybe it's just because of the, I don't know if the background of the hamster is that it's from space. I don't know, I just assumed that it was a Mass Effect, uh, you know, Easter egg. Right, Boo is his name. The hamster's name is Boo. <laughs> um. Oh, those are from AD&D. Ah, okay. Well, you know, it's natural to assume that it would be because, well, it's a thing in the old games. Uh, Shepard also has a hamster that makes the same sound as Boo in BG2. Right. But I think that that sound bite comes from um, Baldur's Gate. So maybe it's just a reference to the old games. I don't know. I'm just assuming. I'm just hoping that they were like, ah, yes, Mass Effect, of course. Who knows? Um, but, uh, you know, from what we know, this is like, you know, all of the things that I've uh, like, like that I've talked about earlier throughout the stream is why, like, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for the next game because it seems like we have like really the right people behind the project here. Um, and it just seems like they understand the vision for it and then we have somebody like, you know, Mary DeMarle, uh, Michael Tucker even. And that says a lot when these, you know, the, the story and the script writers uh, are just generally people that are very skilled and talented at what they do, which is writing and, and storytelling. So, and that is what really makes Mass Effect Mass Effect. As much as the gameplay is really good and the trilogy and... Uh, how much, you know, the the character, like everything else works in the game as a game or as games, the the story and the characters are, are really what, you know, pulls everybody in. Because that is the biggest question. Uh, the biggest questions to everything about Mass Effect is all story and character related. It's not really so much about gameplay stuff, which is, you know... Really, that just shows what people are interested in the universe. And that's why I'm so looking forward to it and why I think it looks so promising because the the people involved with it seem to be the type of people you want on your team uh, when you're making a game that is heavily story-centric, right? Character-centric. Uh yeah, the yeah, right. Mass Effect added a reference to the early Baldur's Gate games. Right, true. Like go for the optics. That that as well. That as well. Um You made it before it ended this time. Hey Vet Gamer. Yeah, you can just go through the entire thing. We've been keep, keep you know keeping pretty busy with this entire uh stream, I think. Um and you know, really while we don't really know that much, I, I still think we know sort of what to expect, I think, in a way. 
also we'll see in a week uh maybe you know the tease is going to be even bigger than i imagined uh but still i just want to mention that again uh don't imagine anything giant it's going to be a small teaser at most uh if we get a trailer i'm going to be super happy and i'm going to scream and cry uh... <laughs> no i'm not but you know i was going to say something way worse there but hey uh Galaxy dominated by the Krogan and the Geth Empires could be a good setting for a new story. Maybe. Or just people, you know, fighting for power. I think that's a, a brilliant idea. Just can't wait for a gameplay demo at EA Play. You think that's going to be a thing? Uh, for N7, I would love to see an introduction to the devs old and new for the new Mass Effect game. Yeah, I would really want to see like a deep dive of the people that are working right now at Mass Effect. I would love to see... You know what they're like what roles really they have to play what they're excited about and stuff like that would be lovely to see uh because that is some something that like videos of you know like the um, you guys remember the making of mass effect video this one i forgot to mention this uh elias you with the 50 gifted you absolute specter jesus what a legend come in here just boomed <laughs> Elias, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Every goddamn time comes here. <laughs> it's just lambs a bunch of members. Welcome, by the way. Remember to join the Discord channel if you haven't already. Uh, <laughs> remember this video, right? The making of Mass Effect. Uh, now, I'm not going to watch this entire documentary, but something like this. Now, of course, they recorded this, uh, I think, um, after the whole trilogy or, well, not the trilogy, but the first Mass Effect had released, right? Uh, I don't remember exactly when this first was uploaded, but I would like to see something like this, you know, just a small uh, video uh, of of the different people like... You know, um, this uh, kind of person right here, uh, the, the art uh, director, was it right? I keep forgetting their names for, uh, to and from. You, you're you're going to have to excuse me. I'm streaming, so it's it's it, it, it happens. But uh, here's one of the guys that are, that is back, right? Uh, here is uh, another guy that is also back. Uh, the name, again, slips. But something like this would be wonderful to see just to you know get an even deeper feel of the people that are involved with the game so um hey bioware if you guys are seeing this this would be super interesting to see also you know you kind of want to see uh more concepts and teasers like we got last time because that would again like give us an idea of what they're building um but yeah i, I just love videos where they actually show some behind the scenes stuff and they could like blur stuff out, you know, that you don't really see what's going on in the background. So you can't really discern exactly what's happening. That would have us speculating for so, so many months, maybe even years. Who knows? Uh, but that would be amazing. Jesus Christ, what's going on here? It still keeps updating in the chat. Jesus. Uh, Vet Gamer Bosefus, thanks for the 10 bucks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Looking forward to ME, but dev cycles continue like they are. I'm 52 years. Uh, I will be 80 when it comes out. I don't think you're going to have to wait that long, man. I don't think so. Uh, they've already been working at this game for at least, like, uh, if we if we take uh, Michael's LinkedIn at face value, they've been working at this for at least four years. That's a long time. And if you look at the technology that uh, Unreal Engine 5 seems to provide, I think, I'm really hoping here. Now, I, you know, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that you're not unhyped. I want to make you excited for it, right? <laughs> Uh, but I don't think that you were going to have to wait that long because I mean, four years, that's a considerable amount of time and it's still in pre-production. Again, guys, pre-production does not mean that they haven't gone anywhere. Pre-production is usually the longest time or the longest, um, period that, uh, a game gets worked on because they're preparing, then they're setting things up. They're setting things up 
hopefully for success. And the more they plan, the more they set up, the more they have a clear plan and idea and goal of what they want to do and the structure and it's, you know, being led as it should, <laughs> which unfortunately has been an issue before with Bioware games, then this could turn out to be an absolutely amazing installment and we probably won't have to wait until you're 80, man. I don't think you're going to have to wait that long. <laughs> At least I'm not, I, at least I hope that you won't have to. The same here, you know. Uh, Harbinger, assuming direct control. <laughs> Welcome to the Ensvin squad as an Ensvin recruit. How long did MEA take? I think um, they actually rushed um, Mass Effect Andromeda because there was a lot of issues regarding, uh, I think, the vision and things with the uh, procedural generation sort of. Uh, so it took much longer than it should have. And then they had to rush production than when they had to like essentially remake the whole game again. So I don't know, it like just took a couple of years, really. Um, but normal dev cycles, right? They're usually like five or six years by now. And uh, I think we're still going to be in that ballpark, to be honest. Uh, I've uh, put my money on 2026 is my assumption that is going to be again you know i don't know that don't take that as a confirmed thing i'm just speculating here but i would think that yeah 2026 sounds like a good plan especially if they like release uh dragon age next year because you know they're finishing the the um uh the fin they're finishing the game up essentially because they've moved some mass effect people over there to finish and polish the game so it's probably going to be like dragon age is probably going to be a out next year and uh, after that, uh, good timing would be like, yeah, two years, give or take, for the next Mass Effect game to come out after that. Uh, I think that's um, th that's a good ballpark, I think. Um, I think we'll have to wait a minimum of three years. Yeah, a pro yeah, somewhat like maybe two and a half to three years, probably, I would assume. A and 727 november 727 that would be insane that would be a good that would be a good year to release the game but the general uh you know gamers around the world they wouldn't give a shit <laughs> cuz you know i think most consumers don't know what n7 day is i don't think most people know that mass effect even has a you know a, an international sort of celebration day so I, you know, as much as I would love that just for the sake of meaning, uh, I, I think they're just going to release the game whenever it's ready. Uh, I think that's the best way of approaching it. Are we going to wake up as another uh, Shepard clone in ME4 to play as you think? I don't think that's a good idea. I, I, I love playing around with the speculation part of that, but I don't think that, you know, <laughs> not a clone of Shepard. It has to be Shepard or it has to be somebody else. <clears throat> trust me bro yeah trust you bro 27 and 7 and that's the date <laughs> if conrad Werner isn't in the next game it's not totally worth it we'll have to see you know maybe you're gonna see a new conrad Werner. that would be that would be lovely <laughs> either me or big dan that would be amazing <laughs> you know what i would actually like to see i would like to see dan be in the game as sort of a not me i would love to see dan as a sort of a conrad Werner type character and you know the way he says i should go <laughs> at the end of his videos that would be amazing you know if he's also like a shepherd super fan that would be amazing to just have him be in the game and then when he says goodbye <laughs> he just does it in the same dry way that dan does as well that would be amazing I would love that. Um, if I mention N7 Day to my friends, they have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, sadly. Yeah, same situation here. It's, uh, you know, the general public just doesn't know about Mass Effect, which is a shame. You know, I want to spread the good word of our Lord and Savior franchise, Mass Effect, to everybody. But no matter how hard I try, it's just not going the distance so i think um 
Bioware really just has to put in a lot of work in making the game as good as it can be. Because Mass Effect really needs to explode into the, uh, you know, into pop culture again, I feel. I, th I think that it really needs to. It's an am amazing franchise and it has so much potential compared to many other franchises. It's such an amazing, huge, vast universe just brimming with details and things you can just expand upon. <clears throat> Should be both of you. <laughs> Ranting and raving about something. Oh yeah, I would love that. Like uh, having two, you know, uh, two theory guys just, you know, ranting or raving about... Uh, has Shepard returned? Uh, wasn't Shepard dead? Oh, I hope Shepard returned. You know, some some silly thing like that. It would be amazing. That would be cool. <laughs> Not gonna happen though. Uh, it could be a great popular franchise if someone make 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 it a bit more mainstream. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. But it's it's hard. It's hard. The peasants have no clue about N7. Who cares? True, but I mean, if we want Mass Effect to grow as a franchise, it needs to make money. How do you do that? Uh, they could easily rake it in with a first contact TV show or something. Yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people feel fatigued with a lot of stuff that has come out. Imagine if Mass Effect made like a, you know, first contact show as we've speculated that there might be working on or, you know, maybe even a movie that they've worked on or something. A TV show would be brilliant covering stuff like that, you know. The first contact war, maybe uh, a coups, stuff like that, that sort of brings new people into the universe and makes everybody think, damn, this is an amazing universe. I want to know more about it. And then they play the Master Trilogy and they're in love. They can't stop playing, playing it. And uh, yeah, that's that's how you get them. That's how you grab them. So, sort of like what, uh, what Cyberpunk punk kind of did with edge runners right something like but that would be amazing like a, a show that's animated um with the same sort of budget uh and the same kind of style i think could work as well <clears throat> you're so done with prequels i could see that but we haven't seen the first contact war wouldn't that be amazing if it actually brings a lot more people into the universe? We can get more Mass Effect. Uh, didn't Henry Cavill post a pic of him with a ME script, or is he a voiceover in the game? Good question. No idea. But yeah, I know that he posted that uh, little teaser um, about reading a a a, uh, a sort of excerpt of uh, the Geth Quarian War on Rannoch. Uh So essentially, it was just a wiki page of Mass Effect Three. From what I could understand, it was like a an excerpt, um, and it's super interesting. But I'm not sure. Like that's the thing. I haven't heard anything after that. Um, I'm still sort of hopeful that he's gonna have some form of role. That would be amazing. Maybe like a young command, uh, like a Stephen Hackett would be amazing. But you know, that maybe just didn't fall through. That happens. Uh, we saw parts of the first contact in the Citadel DLC. Yeah, parts, but that was just a, you know, pre-rendered uh, still, uh, or w was it animated even? I don't remember. Hologram, was it, right? I think Amy has a so some sort of a staying power from the trilogy, but unfortunately, uh, Emmy changed the outlook of the Emmy series. I don't know if it did, because if anything, the Legendary Edition really brought a lot of people back again it seems uh especially veterans like old uh fans from mass effect it would seem and um so i don't think that's necessarily true but uh, i th i think they just gotta you know keep uh that sort of positive image going like they brought with the legendary edition even if it wasn't a perfect remaster it was still highly celebrated and i mean i managed to make a, a a youtube channel out of it dan did as well right and other people as well so it's like you know i, I think it's looking bright if you look at it like that um I really need to get a N7 jacket, show the colors that, as it were. Very true. I should probably wear this more. The problem is that this uh, is fall leather. So this isn't real leather. So it's probably going to like fall apart if it's really cold. And as you know, I live in Sweden. So 
it's uh <laughs> it's bound to be cold any minute now uh i think it already is so i can't really use it as an outside jacket as much as i want to like show off oh look at these colors look at how sweet this jacket is look how amazing it is like how you know form fitting it is it's just gonna fall apart unfortunately i really hope that they are gonna bring this back into the merch store uh they probably will pretty sure they will first contact war game would make for a good fps type game which would be right up ea's alley very true they could do that you know why not then again i would like to see a uh third person shooter as Mass Effect has always been. But then again, you know, if it's a side story, if it's a spin-off, then I would be all for it. As long as we get more Mass Effect and it makes sense and it's good, then I'm fine. You know, it's 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 fine. My N7 jacket sadly fell apart, so I need a new one. Oh man, I'm sorry about that Javi Nova. That sucks. Was it the same one? The same thing as I have? Because this only is in this room ever. I've, I haven't taken this out from this room ever since I got this. Um, any, in any case, guys, I gotta stop streaming right here because I haven't eaten at all today, sort of. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is everything that we currently know, as I mentioned before. So, uh, yeah, it's there's quite, you know, a few teases here and there that we've seen. I'm hoping that we get to see something really special this year. Now, again, probably gonna be small, super tiny. In any case, I gotta thank you guys for being here and thank you for all the support, all the gifted memberships, by the way. Hung, Edemian, Ezra, and Elias, you guys are absolute specters for sure. Jesus Christ, biggest star in Sweden. Thank you, Warhawk. Appreciate it. You streaming for N7? Uh, I will, since N7 is on Tuesday next week, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we might just stream on Monday as well, just to sort of hype it up. Uh, then on Tuesday, I will probably be making videos in case we get something. In case we don't get anything, I will probably still make a video. Still. Uh, any videos to look forward to? Probably some uh, dry, um, Baldur's Gate 3 mod videos or something. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you as always, guys. Take care of yourselves and uh, have a nice week. Mr. Holton, signing out.